In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement theme management within your Flutter application. This tutorial will work for whether you're deploying a Flutter application to the web, desktop, or mobile. And with the click of a button, you are going to be able to change the look and feel of your Flutter application. Before I begin, I just want to let you guys know the links to all of the resources as well as the source code for this video can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it. To get started, I'm going to be showing you guys the actual packages that we're going to be using to achieve this functionality. Firstly, I'm going to be using the JSON theme package, which will give me the ability to read in a JSON file and then convert that into a theme data object. And where we get this JSON from, I'll show you guys that as well. But we'll copy this, come back to pubspec.yaml and then paste it in here as well. And then after that, I will go and use the provider package as my preferred state management solution to actually manage the state of what our current theme is and switch between these themes. But you can employ any state management solution that you like as long as you understand the basic principles. So with this then, I'll come back to pubspec.yaml and add provider as a dependency as well, and then do command save. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be showing you guys is how we're going to be accessing the information we need to derive how our app should look like or the color scheme for it. You can do this multiple ways, but the way I prefer, and this is generally true for smaller tree or solo developers, is to use some kind of a tool or a website to quickly help you generate a color scheme or a color palette. The website I recommend is apppainter.dev. It's created by a GitHub user, Joshua Tang. So if you like this repo, then definitely go ahead and give their GitHub repository a star which I forgot to do so, so I'll do that. Once you're in the appainter.dev website, all you have to do is basically select a seed color, then you can change all of the other color properties here as well. But let's just say that the color that I want my application to be is going to be this teal color. And once this is done, it's going to show you a preview of how your application is going to look like with the material components. So this is the look and feel of our application that we can expect with using this kind of a seed color. So now what I can do is basically click on the export button here. It's going to export a JSON file to me, which I can import into my Flutter project. But before we do that, the next thing that I'll do is that I'll change the brightness to dark. And then I'll change the color here to be the same teal again, and I'll do export once again. And this time I will have two JSON files. And then what you can do is come to your Flutter project, create a new folder here, call it assets. Then under assets, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this teams. And then I'm going to copy the two teams that were given to me and putting them in the teams folder. Then what I'm going to be doing is actually changing the names for this team to be, let's just say team underscore dark like so. And for the other one, I'll do rename team underscore light just for me to better understand what these themes are. And then once this is done, I'm going to come to pubspec.yaml. I'm going to come to the point where we have our assets line commented. I'm going to uncomment this line and I'm going to tell Flutter to load these assets. And I'm going to say that load everything and make it available that under assets slash themes. So once this is done, do command save and then give your application a test run to make sure that it's working. And once the application is running on the device, I'll resume the video. So now that my application is actually running on the simulator, the first thing that we have to do is create some kind of a mechanism that can allow us to manage our themes. For that, I'm going to be using provider, but you can use any state management solution as long as you understand the logic, it should work for you as well. So under my lib folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this providers. Then underneath of providers, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this theme underscore provider dot dart. Once this is done, I'm going to create a class, which I'm going to call team provider, and it's going to extend a change notifier. And the reason we're extending change notifier is because we want to notify the listeners for this class about changes that occur within the class. So this is why we're implementing a change notifier. So standard provider practices. From this being done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is creating an enumeration. And I'm going to call this team enum. And I'm going to say that this is going to have two values. Either we are going to have a dark or a light theme. So let's do that and do command save. And then once this is done, then I'm going to create a theme enum variable in my class. I'm going to call this current theme. And I'm going to set this to theme enum dot light. So to start with, we're going to have a light theme and then we can switch between that. Once that is done, I'm also going to create another optional variable of type theme data. And I'm going to call this current theme data and then i'm going to just set that to be nothing for now so it's null once this is done the next thing that i'm going to do is implement a singleton pattern for my theme provider class so that there's always only one single instance of this theme provider within my application so to do that i'll create a static variable which i'll say is going to be theme provider it's going to be optional and i'm going to say underscore instance like so then i'm going to create another static method and this time it's going to be a getter method, which will provide us with a theme provider. 
and I'm going to say get instance. And then what I'm going to do is that within this function, I'm going to say that if our instance is null, then we're going to be setting that equal to theme provider. And then what I'll do now is that I'll create a function called theme provider dot underscore init. So a private constructor method, and I'll set this to be that. So like so. So with this is done, the last thing I'll do is that within this getter function, I'll say return the instance. So this will ensure that always there is only one instance of our theme provider within our application. And I forgot to add a exclamation mark here. So let's do that. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing now is actually implementing the function which will allow us to change the theme of our application. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a function which is going to return a future void. And I'm going to say that this function is going to be called change theme. And then it's going to take in a theme data within it. So I will call this theme. And then I'll mark this function as async and open it up. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is setting the current theme to be the theme. And then when this is done, then what I'll do is actually also call the function notify listeners. So notify listeners is basically going to let the listeners of this class know that hey, something within this class has changed. And I forgot to change this. This is not going to be theme data. This will be theme enum, like so. So now what we have to do is that now that the user is letting us know that, hey, I want to change the theme, we need to take this theme and then derive some theme data that we can give to Flutter. So how do we do that? Well, what I'll do is that I'll create a, another function which I'll say is will be future void as the return type. And this is going to be called underscore generate theme data and underscore because this is a private function. I don't want this accessible outside of this class. And then I'll mark this as async and open it up. The first thing that I need to do is load the information from the JSON file. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll say I'll have a string and I'll call this team str and I'll set this equal to a call to await root bundle dot load string and then pass here the actual relative path to the asset file that I want to load. So what is that going to be? Well, it depends on what type of theme we have, right? If it's theme dark, then it's the theme dark.json. If it's theme light, then it's theme light.json. So how do we do that? Well, a good way to go about this would be to create another function which returns us a string. And this is going to be get theme JSON path. And what I'm going to do here is that I'll say that I'll have a switch statement and we are going to switch over the current theme. So if the current we is going to be theme enum dot dark, or let's do light first, then we return something and I'll let you guys know what we return. Well, let's break the, let's remove the break statement. And then after that, I'll have another case and this is going to be theme dark and then we'll have a default case. So in the case that it's light, what I'm going to do is return the following. I'll return the relative path to the light.json. So I'll right click on it in VS Code and then do copy relative path and paste it in like so. And then what I'll do is that next time I'll right click on the dark one, copy relative path. And then here I'll say in the case of the dark, it's going to be the following file like so. And then it's always good to implement a default case with your switch statement. So for the default, I'll then again say that we'll return theme light.json. Then what I'll do is that I'll use this function as a call and I'll say that we'll get the path from this function. So I'll pass the functions output to load string like so. So now it'll automatically determine and give us the correct JSON file for the actual theme that we've selected and do command save. So now once we've actually taken the JSON file, this function root bundle.load string will take a look into the JSON file, extract the information from it, and give that JSON to us in a string format. So now what I want to do is take the string interpretation of the JSON and convert that into a JSON object. So for that, I'll say that I'll create a variable of type map. I'm going to call this team JSON. And then what I'll do is that I'll use a function called JSON decode and I'll pass the theme store to it. So it'll decode the theme string into a JSON object. And then finally, what I'll do is that I'll say that our current theme data is going to be equal to theme decoder. And this is going to come from the package that we had imported within our application, which is the JSON theme package. And on the theme decoder, I'm going to call a function called decode theme data, and then I'll pass the theme JSON to it and do command save. 
Then once this is done, I will come back to my change theme function. And once we've updated the current theme, then what I'm going to do is have a call to the generate theme data function. And before I notify the listeners, I'm going to await for this to complete. So once this is completed, then we're going to notify listeners and we can be sure that now our current theme data is actually going to have the theme data within it. So now that our theme provider is set up correctly, let's go to main.dart and set up the changes we need there for theme management to work properly. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to main and I'm going to be marking this as async. And then I'm going to say that I'm going to do a call to widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized like so. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is within my main.dart file, setting up my application in a way that we can consume the theme provider. So to do that, what I'll do is that I'll come to my material app. I'll do control shift R on the actual material app widget, and this will allow me to open up the refactor menu, and I'm going to say wrap with widget. The widget that I'm going to be wrapping this with will be a multi-provider. You can use any type of other provider, but I'm just using a multi-provider. And then this expects us to pass it a list of providers as well as a child. I'm not going to be using the child property here. What I'm going to be using here is the builder function. So what builder basically does is that it expects us to pass it a function, which defines how we are going to build the child for the multi-provider, gets passed two things, a context and then a widget. And then what we basically do within this function is I'm going to add the function here. Um, and then I'm going to say that we're going to return the material app like so. So once my actual material app has been wrapped with the multi provider, my application is going to give me an error. So I'll stop running it. And what I'm going to be doing is actually setting up everything. And then we're going to give our application a test run. So by wrapping my actual material app with the multi provider, whatever providers I add within this providers list, the child of this multi provider will have access to them. In this case, material app or any child of those. So now what I'm going to be doing is inside of this providers, I'm going to be defining what provider we're going to be having. So we are going to create a change notifier provider for the create function. I'll ignore the parameter that it's passed to us. And then in the create function, it expects us to return it a provider. What we're going to be doing is returning an instance of theme provider dot instance like so and do command save. And the reason we're doing dot instance is because we want to make sure that there's always only one single instance of theme provider within our application. So now that we've defined this, the material app should have access to our change notifier provider. So we can actually go about implementing the actual team data. So to do this, what I'm going to be doing is within my material app, you can see that there is the property theme. What I'm now going to be doing is that instead of defining the theme data here, I'm going to be getting this information from our theme provider. So to do this, all we have to do is do provider dot off. And then here I'm going to pass the type of provider I want to get. So in this case, it's going to be theme provider. And then here I'm going to pass the context. And then from here, I will do current theme data like so and do command save. So now our theme data is going to be derived from our theme provider and do command save. And every time something within our theme provider changes, that everything underneath of this multi provider is going to be re rendered. Hence, our material app is going to be re rendered with the new theme data. So this is how it basically works. So now that this is done, before we run our application, the next thing that I want to do is ensure that when our application actually spins up for the first time, that some theme data is generated. Because for now, our theme data is going to be empty and we are going to get an error. So what I'm going to do for that is that inside of my main function, what I'm going to be doing here is that before I run my application, I will do an await call to theme provider dot instance and I'm going to say that I will do a call to change theme and here I will pass theme enum dot light. So I want to change the theme of our application to be light and within change theme, we're going to call the actual generate theme data function, which will actually set the current theme data and the theme data is then not going to be null. And then once our actual material app accesses the provider, the current theme data should have some value. So with this done, that's pretty much all we have to do for now. So let's give our application a test run and make sure that everything is working. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, the theme of our application has now changed and currently it's showing the teal theme that we had created using App Painter. So now what I want to do is implement the logic which will allow us to switch between themes. So to do that, it's going to be pretty simple. The first thing that we are going to be doing is implementing some kind of a mechanism that can allow us to check if the user presses on a certain button. So what type of a button can we use? Well, what I'll do is that on my app bar, I'm going to define an actions list like so. 
And then here, what I'm going to be doing is that I'll say I'll have an icon button. And this icon button will have an on pressed callback, which for now I'll leave as an empty function. And then an icon, which I'll do icon, and then icon start, let's do dark, let's do light mode first. And then we'll come to dark mode later and do all shift F command save. And now we have a button that we can click on to switch between teams. So let's actually take a look at switching between teams. To switch between teams, it's going to be very easy. The first thing that I'll do is that in my build method, I'll access the team provider and save a reference to the current team. So I'm going to do team provider is underscore team provider and then set that equal to provider dot off. So the same way we did it before and give it the context like so. And then in the off here, I'm going to define the type of the provider that we want to get, which is team provider. And once this is done, I'll take the team provider, I'll come to the on pressed function. And here I'm going to do the following. If our team provider current team is light, then we're going to set the team provider dot change team to be team enum dot dark. And let me do dark and light like so. And then what I'll do is that I'll have an else statement like so. So in the case that this is not the case, then we are going to do something else. So else what we'll do is that we'll have the same call, but I'm going to do team provider dot light. So if it's light, we'll change the team to dark. Otherwise we'll change the team to light because it will be dark and then do command save. So once this is done, that's pretty much all we had to do. So now if I go ahead and click on this button, it's going to go ahead and change the theme of our application to be dark now. And it's going to pull this information from the JSON file for the dark theme that we had defined. So the last thing that I want to do is that I want to change the icon for this button as well to reflect what's going on. So for that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming to the icon button that I've defined. And then for the icon here, what I'll do is that I'll say if our theme providers dot current theme is going to be equal to theme enum dot light, then what I want to do is do icons dot and I'm going to do light mode. Otherwise, I will do icons dot dark mode. And that's pretty much all we had to do to command save. And now it's showing us the dark mode. We click on it again, it's light, click on it again, it's dark. And now everything within our application is going to change according to the team data that we had defined. So with that done, that pretty much concludes today's tutorial. If, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.